Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from an unfortunately little gloomy San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome from Bucharest, Romania, our first guest who coming to us from Bucharest, Romania, Eric Melkor. How are you doing, Eric? Hey, John. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing today? Good, good. And uh, Eric is a, an expat from Texas living in Romania. Apparently, you're a mediocre tennis player, but we'll skip over that one. I'm, I'm probably less, even less mediocre than that or more mediocre. <laughs> Host of the Innovators Can Laugh podcast and partnerships geek at Optimunk. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is how to turn an online journey from drabby, an online customer journey from drabby to amazing. So um, let's get straight into it, Eric. Uh, the whole idea of customer journey, right? It's, that is thrown around all the time now about customer journey, customer journey, customer experience, all of this. Yeah. But still, I, I, I still don't think people are very good at actually understanding how, you know, a customer journey, how would an end-to-end -end customer journey even looks like. Yeah. So when I think about customer journey, just think about like if you go into Zara or maybe Mosimo or something like that, one of your favorite retail stores, usually the experience is pretty good, right? But when you go shop online somewhere, an e-commerce brand, that experience is vastly different. Different, And you're probably saying, of course it is, it's online, right? You can't deliver the same in-person real world experience. But our motto is, is that we want you to treat visitors like people, do not treat them like traffic. Get rid of all of those CRO tactics that marketers have been doing, like showing those pop-ups immediately when somebody comes to their site, trying to ask for information without giving anything up front that's valuable or educational, or showing those fake deadlines like, hey, you got 15 minutes to get a discount on this before the price goes back to, you know, uh. back to the normal price. I mean, those are just all bad experiences. And we're saying, do away with that. Put yourself in the visitor's shoes and try to offer a pleasurable online shopping experience, John. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that because actually, if you compare the experience, you imagine going into a physical retail store and you pick up something and you say, okay, I'm going to buy this. And you walk up to the counter and they say, I'm sorry, before I'm going to even let you buy this, how about you buy this as well? Or even this, this is cheap. And you add on this. No, I don't want that. But how about this? How about that? And that's the experience that we give people online all the time. Yeah. You don't walk into a h and and as soon as you step inside, they're like, hey, if you give us uh, your phone number, we'll give you like a 10% discount. It never happens. It doesn't uh -huh. happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But for some reason, online marketers have been uh, conditioned to think that way. We got to get their email address before they leave the website. You know, we got to get it somehow offer a coupon code. So you're now you're eating into your margins. And there's better ways to do that. Some of the top, the, the fastest growing brands in the e-commerce space don't even use tactics like that. And they're able to scale and be profitable because they focus on uh, they focus on the, the visitor, the shopper, the customer. And so uh, I have a few examples that I can share yeah, with you. Please do. Yeah. So what, one, of the, one of the brands that I really like is uh, Indestructible Shoes. If you ever heard of these shoes, they're exactly like, like the name. In fact, I went down a rabbit hole looking at their videos on YouTube. They have this one video where uh, this guy's trying to cut through the shoe through a saw. They have another one where uh, he's walking on a bed of nails and the shoes do not destruct. I mean, they're magnificent. They're actually built with this military grade Kevlar. Anyway, uh, really cool product. But when a person tries to uh, when a person puts something in their shopping cart and they, they don't make a purchase and they try to leave the site, the typical thing a brand would do would be like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. Uh, we got a 10% coupon code here. Feel free to use it and go back and complete your purchase. Instead, instead, what we help them do is actually use a different tactic where we said, you know, hold on a second. Have you seen our, 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 you know, our top selling items this month? And it will say like the current month's best selling items. So it's say, you know, they're a shoe company and it will say, have you seen June's top three selling shoes? And we have images of those, those three shoes. And so that actually captures people's attention and makes them pause and say, whoa, okay, maybe I didn't look at those. Let me continue browsing a little bit. And it works. It's very effective. You don't eat into your margins. It draws people back into the shopping experience and, and it has a pretty good conversion rate compared to the, um, the, old, the old tactic of trying to give a, a coupon out to get somebody in. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I really like that because it's, uh, as you said, I mean, that's a real experience, right? And you're, it's a helpful experience. And rather than, as you said, this one where you just get blasted. And then, of course, if you put in your email address, you get a thousand emails and texts saying, there's still items in your cart. There's still items in your cart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I like that about the fact that, you know, you're creating some, as you said earlier, some valuable experience. Do you have any other examples? Because I think these are very useful. Yeah, so Blendjet is another e-commerce brand. Uh, they were started in 2018. Ryan Pamplin is the founder. He got into an accident and he was bedridden for a couple of months and he could only drink liquid fluids. And he did not like how things were being blended in the blender that was in the hospital. And so he came up with the idea about this portable blender. Now, I think every three seconds, one is sewed. They were actually featured on Ellen DeGeneres and very profitable brand. But when you hear him speak, he attributes a lot of the success to their brand to increasing the average order value on the website. Now, they did it in a very smart way. They actually did it by using a free shipping threshold. Mm -hmm. And so if you put something in your cart, based on the calculation or based on the amount that was in there, let's say the blender was $24, but you got free shipping if you spent $40 or more. So once you put something in, something in a cart, then a little header would appear on the, on the website, like a horizontal bar. And it would just say, you know, spend $15 more and you get free shipping. And mm -hmm. that actually stopped people and it made them browse a little bit more. And that was very effective in increasing, uh, we're just getting, you know, higher sales a higher average order uh, order value, and uh, it ultimately led to a lot of success in, in their growth. Yeah, no, as you said, I mean, again, it's something that's nice and adding adding some, you know, giving some value to the person. I actually think my son is one of those. He's got one of those portable blenders. <laughs> He's a big workout guy. So, um, <clears throat> so then, uh, so then, how can how can how can people who have online stores now take a step back and and take a look at the experience? And I really put because everybody goes like, oh, we're we're very customer focused and we're very you know end user yeah. focus but how can they take off the blinders and take a step back and saying well, what advice would you give to to people when they look at their online i mean or how can they look at their online shopping experience take off their blinkers and and yeah. really approach it in a in a more neutral fashion because we tend to kind of convince ourselves no no this is okay and i can put another thing in here and i can put another thing in there this is this will be okay right. but we never use ourselves almost as a frame of reference, because I guarantee you, we often create experiences for people that we would hate ourselves if we saw them somewhere else. Yeah, John, that's a good question. So I think of I think of CRO, um, uh, conversion rate optimization, a little bit like Google Analytics. A lot of people, practically everyone says they use or have Google Analytics. That just means that they turned it on. <laughs> It's not very effective if you're not going in there and creating, you know, custom reports and pulling out data that can really give you insights, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing with the CRO platform. It's not really effective if you don't use it properly. So every brand is different. What we have is a CRO checklist and you go through it, you spend, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And just like Abe Lincoln said, I think he said, if you give me four hours to cut down a tree, the first three hours, I'm going to spend sharpening the mm -hmm. axe. Right. Yep. So we say spend a little bit of time, go through this checklist because every brand is different. So, for example, one question could be, is more than 20 percent of your traffic international? And if mm -hmm. it is OK, there is an opportunity to actually add personalization for your international customers. And so if somebody's coming to your store, let's say they're coming from Ireland and you're a U.S. based store, you can have a little message that appears and says, Welcome. We ship to Ireland. Right. You know, all prices are in the euro. They include all prices include taxes and there's free shipping if you spend more than 100 euro. That's a really nice yep. welcome message for some international visitor who's not even sure that you ship to their location, right? Yep. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great, I, I think that's a great one because yeah, I mean, sometimes we also get caught up in not really thinking broadly enough about the audience. And like you said, uh, Google Analytics and their new, what's it, Google Analytics 4 or something that they've just brought out. Um, I do, I think you're right. I think most people just hook it up and then they go, oh, let's run some reports and they go, oh, this is too hard. And then they just leave it. <laughs> yeah, they just leave it. So the checklist is designed to to really try to find out and learn more about your store, your situation. Another question on the on the uh, checklist is, 
is your card abandonment rate above you know 68 percent because we consider anything above 68 percent uh pretty bad and so there's opportunities to do something like in the example i shared yeah. about indestructible shoes where if somebody puts something in their cart and they try to leave you know here's various tactics that you can use to try to draw them back in another question could be are you building both an email and sms list mm -hmm. and if that's the case here are some very effective and smart strategies on how you can do that and still give a pleasurable experience. So, you know, the checklist is really designed to where once you go through that, then you get personalized, I mean, well, not really personalized, but yeah, personalized recommendations on what you should focus mm -hmm. on. And so the low hanging fruit, and we also give you step-by-step -step instructions on actually how to implement those tactics if you're going to use our platform. Yeah. And it's interesting you just mentioned there, um, email and SMS. I mean, email, obviously, you know, uh, everybody's familiar with, um, although some a lot of people are still using it very badly. And SMS now has become, an ex to some people, is an extension of email. And I don't think people are tailoring what they're putting out through SMSs for that for that medium so just talk a little bit about how you can leverage them effectively because i'm seeing a lot of people leveraging them pretty badly right now yeah yeah so where optimum comes in is that we help you grow those lists the sms mm -hmm. and the email list and if you're we have a lot of integrations and so let's say you're using clavio we've got a really robust integration with clavio that allows you to tag different visitors in in your website and so if you're doing any sort of like segmentation, maybe you got different email flows or SMS flows for different uh, segments, you can actually tag them on the website so that that way when they flow into your CRM, you already know what flow that they need to go into, which is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. cool. And we have integrations with uh, HubSpot, ActiveCampaign, uh, Go High Level, and many other platforms out there. But what a lot of brands and marketers really use us for is that we've got pop-ups um, that are really designed for, you know, growing your email list in a smart and effective way. The smartest marketers, John, are actually using zero party data. And what I mean by that is that they're trying to start a conversation. And then based on the answers and replies from the visitors, that's data. That's mm -hmm. information that they can collect and that they can use going forward to deliver customized, you know, content and personalized recommendations. And so that's a very smart way, uh, you know, to pull information, also grow your email and SMS list and deliver the content that the audience wants. Yeah. And, and I think that's the that's the important part is the content that the audience wants. I mean, some people do it well on email. A lot of people don't. SMS. I mean, I haven't seen any good examples so far. In fact, I mean, SMS is getting a bit spammy right now. So how can when it comes to SMS, right? What is different there and, and how can people utilize it effectively and, and how should they even decide whether they should use it? Yeah, so our platform does not send out SMS messages. We have some good partners like Recart is one of our partners. So any of our brands that are interested in it, we actually introduce them to either Recart or some other specialists that we work with that are really good at SMS. I've been on a few of those calls and I've been surprised um, by some of the things that I've learned recently. So for example, if you're hesitant to do SMS, but you are collecting SMS numbers, if, if you're unsuccessful in getting any sort of engagement from your mm -hmm. emails, that's where you can kick in SMS. And I was surprised to learn that you can even send an SMS message 30 days after the person signs up. And I thought, wait a minute, isn't that too long? Who's going to respond to a text message sent 30 days after somebody gave their phone number? And, and the, and the, 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 the professional, the uh, specialist who's been doing this for a while, and he goes, well, think about it, right? You haven't been effective in reaching them than email. They're not opening your emails. Mm -hmm. And besides, email probably has an average open rate of anywhere from 18 to 35%, depending on yep. industry. Whereas SMS, pretty high open rate still. It used to be around 98%. Maybe it's trickled down a little bit. So even if it's 30 days later, you're still going to get an open. And if it's uh, if it's good content, you know, if it's if it's not spammy, if it's educational, if it's a good deal, we'll get some responses. And so that's I was surprised to learn that because I thought, oh, wait a minute, you they're going to trigger the SMS uh, message to go out pretty quickly. And this person was like, no, actually, uh, if you don't really want to focus too much on SMS, you can actually delay that and only use it if your email has been ineffective. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And I think, uh, I mean, it's a little bit wild westy right now, I think, in terms of uh, 
of SMS, what people are doing with it, and they're probably going to attract, I think they've already attracted attention of regulators. So we'll see where, see where we end up with that. Um, take me back for a moment. You mentioned like your creative use of pop-ups because when people hear pop-ups, you know, especially in e-commerce sites, they think, oh no, like these pop-ups going to, as I said earlier, like, oh, add this into your cart or add this, add that, add that. How about this? But how do you use pop How do you use pop-ups effectively? Yeah. One of the things I recommend to brands is, um, so for example, with the international visitor, right? That's one example. You know, you're coming maybe yeah. from Ireland, Germany, Australia. You have a little pop up that says "Welcome from Australia." Mm-hmm. Uh, we ship to Australia. You know, that's another. That's another. That's one example. Another one uh, that's pretty effective is what we have is like a little teaser. And so, in the bottom left hand corner, imagine like a little teaser. Uh, it's not taking up a lot of real estate, but maybe it just says, you know, check out our new uh, our new items uh, that we just released or something like that. And it's noticeable. And if nobody clicks on it, no big deal. But that little teaser can follow the person regardless of what page that they're on. And it actually gets a lot of engagement because people are curious, especially if the copy is really good. And if somebody clicks on that, then a pop up can appear. Right. So that's another example of, hmm. of using a pop up effectively. Yeah, no, that, that's really that, that's really interesting. Um, I really like the way you're doing that. And here's a here's another wild card question for you. Okay, so AI, right? Everybody's gone AI nuts, right? And AI tools are coming out, and people are thinking now I can run everything on AI. Um, talk to me about how you see AI impacting this for the good, and and how it can be used, and how it can also perhaps not be used very well, and actually pretty much destroy everything. <laughs> Yeah, we've got a big focus on AI. We're going to be gradually rolling out different uh, different features. One feature we rolled out is our smart headline generator. Mm-hmm. And so we always recommend that you A-B test different headlines, whether it's on the, the homepage or maybe different messaging on the product page. And so you can do that pretty easily with our headline generator. So you can set up an A-B test. And if you haven't come up with any other copy uh, of having a control versus test, then we'll do that for you. You just set up the A-B test, click on the smart headline generator button, and then it's basically going to analyze your website and the page that you're on and then recommend up to five different headlines that you can test. Mm. So that's one of the few features that we just wrote out that's using AI. Wow. And, and, um, and the other thing that I think people are a bit leery of is like, you know, the AI bots and just bot chat bots and stuff in general and not being able to interact with humans. And, and tell me about your or your experience with with chat bots and humans and, and that, because people are getting really tired of of interacting with bots. I think I, there's bot fatigue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not really a bot platform. I always recommend that if you're. You know, if you're maybe a smaller business and you've got high ticket items mm-hmm. and so you're not getting a lot of uh, a lot of purchases, maybe you just get, you know, less than 20 a month or something like that. Maybe you're in the services business. I always recommend sending a personal video. Mm. Uh, and so Bonjuro is a company I actually used to work for. And uh, Bonjuro has got a great integration. They integrate with a lot of different tools out there in tech stacks like MailChimp. Melalite, HubSpot, many of them, you know, Clavio as well, I think. And uh, so when an action does occur, like maybe a purchase on your website, you can get a notification on your phone. And if you want, you can send that person a video uh, wherever you're at. I, I, I use it all the time. In fact, I think I even sent you one, John, did I? I think I was walking my kids. Yeah, yeah, I think morning. you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. I think it's it's great. I think it helps accelerate the relationship with your customers. And so if you have the capacity, you know, to do that, always recommend a, a personal video. But yeah, we are not a, a chatbot platform. Uh, my opinion is, yeah, I'm like you. It's like if I have to, I, I prefer to just send an email to where it gets triggered and leave my email address and somebody like a human reply to me when they can. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Well, listen, Eric, this has been fantastic. And all of Eric's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. 
Yeah, so OptiMonk, we are basically everything that you need for conversion rate optimization. Most of our brands use us uh, for increasing their average order value. Feel free to check us out at OptiMonk.com. And uh, one thing that we just wrote out is called the Tactical Library. And so you can use filters in there. And so if you have a goal of, let's say, getting a better return on your ad spend or maybe growing your email list, or maybe, or maybe boosting your SEO efforts, you can filter by tactic and you can see which CRO tactic you can do to help you achieve that goal. And then when you click on that, you'll see the step-by-step -step instructions and that's called, um, or that's located at optimunk.com forward slash tactical library. Excellent. Well, listen, I would encourage people to check it out. Uh, so say there's a, uh... There's a lot of room for improvement on on customer journeys and customer experience out there, and it's good to w work with people who are on the leading edge of this. So I encourage you to go check out Eric and, and his company. Listen, thanks again, Eric. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.